Hello and welcome to another quick demonstration of some of the ArcSight solutions with regards to real-time correlation. In this particular example, I'm actually going to touch on a new product that we've just released as of uh, October 2016, which is called uh, ADP or the ArcSight Data Platform version 2. As part of that, we have a component called the ArcSight Management Center. You may know it as ArcMC. Uh, and there's a refresh version of that. And I wanted to go into a bit more detail around what ADP provides and some of the functionality that it, it gives as part of its uh, overall packaging, but also a little bit drill down into what ArcMC provides uh, with regards to its graphical interface and its ability to do uh, bulk management across your infrastructure. So without further ado, I'll uh, start and uh, actually go through the demonstration. Now, of course, it's a web interface and we can see that there. Uh, and we're actually going to log into this web interface to actually have a look around and see some of the options and uh, aspects that we can actually do within the system. So the first thing you'll see is uh, a refreshed interface, lots of uh, charts and diagrams that's going to give us some information about what's going on. Now, this is a test environment, uh, and I would stress that it's not really uh, what we would have in a production system. For example, we've got 10 loggers and six connectors with 77 devices. Uh, clearly, that's not a real environment. But we want to illustrate this as an option around some of the aspects that we can display. So we can show that there are some aspects that are providing warnings. We see some devices are not reporting, and we can just quickly spin round the wheel uh, by devices by product type uh, to actually see what's going on and, and see the information with regards to the health of the log sources as well as connectors as well as loggers as part of the infrastructure. So we can see that there's an inactive device, it's a Windows device, one of 36 there, uh, and we can actually click through and actually see what the information is. Uh, we can actually go down a bit further, and one of the other aspects that we can provide now is a license usage. One of the issues that we've always had is being able to understand what the license usage is currently and what it was in the past. And here we can clearly see that we've been over limit on three of the days that we have, uh, and we can actually identify those very easily. Now, of course, the way that the licensing works is it's not going to block you if you have one or two infractions, uh, it's actually over time within a month uh, that they're actually going to cause you any um, uh, problems with the license. And then it's going to be a warning rather than anything else. Uh, we're not here to prevent the system from operating. What we want to do is we want to display this clearly and easily so you can understand what is actually going on with regards to the license and whether you're under or over. Now, we can look at the device types a bit further and we can see there's lots of different things. We can see there's proxy, there's windows. Uh, we can see that there's different devices as part of that. Now, in this case, we're actually going to dig into this in a bit more detail around the Microsoft Windows side of things. And of course, it's highlighted. So we can just click and drill through to display what's going on. Now, we can see there's a host name. We can see that type is Windows and we can see that it's inactive. Why is it inactive? Well, we can identify that the, there is no more events coming from that log source. So the thing to do now is actually jump into the monitoring view and we can jump back to the monitoring view to here to see what's going on we can see that there's some warnings around the connectors and uh, we can see there's two warnings on two particular connectors as well so we can again click and drill through we can see that there's some problems to do with the uh, event volume so this events coming in has dropped dramatically on those connectors could be an indication of a problem we can click the delay to actually dig in to view the details of that and we can see that the in this case that the uh, status is causing a problem as well as the events uh, in. So in this case, we can just see the chart and we can see there's event volume uh, in and out. We can see the events per second as well as what we call events process. Now SLC means since last check for reference. So we can understand what it is uh, over time. In this particular case, it's over an extended period of time. We can see the overall event volume processed is going up, which is fine because that's kilobytes per second, uh, but there is does seem to be an issue with the events per second. So clearly there is a problem with some of the data that's coming through this particular connector. One of the things that's uh, a very useful aspect that we've provided with ArcMC 2.5 is what we call topology view. This gives us the ability to actually start viewing some of this topology by uh, linked aspects of the infrastructure. So we've got two data centers, what we call Washington and Denver, and we see the number of connectors and the devices that feed through, as well as where they are going to in destinations. So in this case, it's either uh, the event broker, Kafka, or it's Logger. So we can actually jump between the data centers and actually dis divide that apart and here we can see our, our Denver data center and we can see that there are a number of devices and the red indicates there's a problem and we can also see that there is a, a warning the the yellow indication around a couple of connectors 
Notice how it actually provides the EPS numbers next to as you hover over those particular uh, connectors and uh, destinations, you can see what's going on. So we can see that those have dropped to zero. And that's why it's indicating as a problem. And the log sources have stopped sending devices in the, the final one as well. So we can understand that this particular logger uh, has got a problem. Jumping back to the Washington view. We can see there's a wider uh, set of devices going through these particular uh, connectors uh, and we can see they're green because we're getting status, we're seeing event flows. And again, just to hover over those, we can see, because uh, this is a test environment, there's uh, anything between uh, one event per second to three events per second, there's 16 events per second, and it gives you the total volume coming out to the destination, which is in this case, it's logger. So we can see that there's very quickly, we can understand what's going on, what the status is, uh, whether it's actually operating and whether the log sources are generating any logs just by looking at the view, just by hovering over that information as well. So that's a very useful view on what we can see across our infrastructure broken down in that, like we say, this, this topology view. Now we're actually going to look at a little bit more around this uh, this particular data center, Washington, it's a, a fictitious one. In this particular set of devices here, um, you can see that this one's called a connector. It's called Blue Coat to Event Broker. That means we're actually sending this information to Kafka for it then to be distributed across a number of destinations. So in this case, we can see that there's, there's only three devices, there's only 32 events per second, and it's going through. The point is, though, we can monitor that with regards to the connector that's feeding through and see what the destination is with regards to the events per second as well. So we've got a level of monitoring. Here we can actually see the destination. We can see some information about whether we got it configured for SSL, what the destinations are. You'll see there with regards to the bootstrap hosts, you'll see that there's some reference information to the uh, Kafka destination with regards to distribution of that data across multiple sources. Again, just jumping back to the Denver data center, we can uh, look at what's going on. We can see the various destinations. We can see that's going to logger, and there seems to be a problem with regards to actually getting that data through. We can see there's both a, a devices and connector issue there, and we can start understanding what's going on. Jumping back to the main view again, we can actually jump through to what we uh, call the, the all node view. Now, you can if you've used ArcMC before, this will look relatively similar, similar with regards to the view. So we've broken it down by logical, in this case, data center. It's just a definition we've defined to group things together. And here we can see the actual uh, the, the, the components, the connectors that we have in, installed and the containers that are installed as well with regards to the actual versions. Uh, important here, we can see the versions very quickly, quickly and easily. We can also then just hover over to view whether it's the current version or not. Uh, so it's very simple and very straightforward uh, and very uh, simple way of actually understanding that. Now, it will do that by the type of connector as well. So you can see here that there are a couple of different versions of the parsers. That means it's the most current for that particular log source and that particular connector. So it's actually understanding the relevance, understanding the, the, the log sources, understanding the devices that are being reported here and giving you the information accordingly. So nice and simple, nice and straightforward. And now we can look at the locations again uh, and actually see what's going on. Just jumping into it, we can see the various uh, devices and systems that are installed in our, our Washington data center. We can see that there's this particular host that happens to have uh, a number of uh, connectors on it. And we can see those connectors. We can see the versions. We can look at the containers very simply. And of course, we can do bulk operations as part of this as well. So we can see the actual versions uh, installed on these particular uh, connectors, in this case, uh, containers that are installed on that particular host. And then we can look at the actual connectors as well uh, and what's actually going on with the events in and events out as well. And we could just jump back to the connect containers again. And we can select and uh, group those uh, by uh, particularly what we want to do. There's with us three there. We can just click the upgrade button. And then we can actually start using and leveraging the uh, marketplace, which you may or may not have seen. And I, I do strongly recommend actually having a closer look at this. So now we actually have the ability to dynamically check the version on the marketplace. So you can see that there's a marketplace account there that we can see the data. We can actually dynamically look to see if it's relevant to that particular connector and the update for it. We can even change the marketplace account that you have as well. So as you need, you can just press the upgrade and it will push the 
parser upgrade. Now that's the difference here. This is just the parser. This is the tiny 10 to 15 Ks worth of update. And you can see the, the particular uh, references to the updates in this particular small update. So none of these uh, 600 meg updates uh, to actually push out a whole connector upgrade. This is just the parser, just to update what's going on with regards to the, how that parser is operating. So it becomes much simpler. You get that very simple uh, visual cue to see that it's updated and it becomes simple for us to update it from there. Jumping back to the connectors again, I'm not actually going to do the update because it's just a demonstration environment, but we can see we've got all the the connectors and all the events in and events out, as well as any cache information by connector. We can also see the, the, the destinations and the paths that are being used as part of those as well. So in this case, we can see event broker of uh, Windows events, and we can just go to the destination. And of course, we can manage these aspects. And again, you'll you'll see this is very similar to the way that we do things with uh, ArcMC. But the point is, in this example, I'm actually going to add a destination to that particular connector to have it send information through. In this case, we're actually going to have it sent through to uh, an event broker. In this case, it's uh, the Kafka destination. So we create a new one. We create a event broker, it's a common event format Kafka. So we carry on, click next. Now we define the information about it. Now, there is a particular set of information you need to define with regards to the, the host and the ports. You have to define the topic that it's going to be subscribing to with regards to pushing the data into Event Broker. So we're just going to call that Windows. You can define SSL as well if you want to. Now, in this example, we're not actually going to do that. But of course, in a real production environment, you you would define encryption for the communications, but that's okay. Uh, you know, you just you just click the drop down and, and set the various uh, certificate properties. So, and now we're moving on to actually define it as a, a primary destination. So, actually send it when it's active. There we can see the information. So, performing the uh, additional of a destination to this particular connector, we can hit next. And it's going to start processing. And it's going to take a second for it to do all the registering and the updating and the confirmation that it's actually done that configuration change. So what we can do is we can jump to logger. Uh, of course, this is updated with the next version as part of this ADP 2.0. So this is logger 6.3, which has the support for, in this particular case, the Kafka uh, subscriber to get the information from the event broker. So we're going to log in. Uh, of course, we see the information. It's a familiar look and feel from this point of view with regards to uh, Logger as it was before. But what we're going to do is we can actually take a closer look at this Windows Event Broker. Now, we can see that there's only a very limited amount of data that's going in there. So let's just jump to receivers. It is a receiver. Now, I, I will mention, of course, Kafka is a publish and subscription model. So uh, you subscribe to a topic, and the topic has the data in it that you want to pull from. That's the critical word, though. Pull. You're pulling data out of Kafka. So technically, we probably shouldn't call it a receiver, but it's the section of configuration where we would make the, the actual change. So we can see that there is a Windows event broker there. We can see that this particular uh, host name, which I, I can assure you it's the same host name as it was that we just defined as the destination. Uh, we can see the topic list uh, that we've defined as well as Windows. So we've pushed the data into Kafka using that destination update that we've just done. Now we're just ensuring that uh, we're actually pulling the data out of uh, Kafka into Logger that we want to do. So uh, that's all defined and ready to go. We jump back to our summary and have a look at Event Broker. And we can see that there's actually no events in. There's nothing. And it will in a second because it needs to connect into Kafka. It needs to then start collecting the data from the topic and pulling it through. Now, we can see that the update has occurred. and well, that's good. And of course, because we're doing connector and uh, container management, we can actually jump through and see these connectors. We can see the data. We can see that the event's in there, but it's not going out yet. So that's interesting. We need to need to make sure that this is operating and, and sending the data through accordingly. So let's just go back to connector, uh, to the logger again. And now we can see we're actually getting the data flowing through. It's only a very limited amount. In this case, it's only 33 events per second. Uh, but we can see what's going on. One of the other aspects that's provided as part of ADP is the ability to forward data into Hadoop. Now, that's what we actually have here. We have a Hadoop system. This is just a cloud era distribution, uh, nothing more than that. Um, just for reference, we're actually using a Flume subscriber into uh, the actual event broker, into Kafka to get 
to get the data out. Uh, but what we're actually going to do is we're just going to log into this particular uh, Cloudera installation uh, just to show you the event information that as it's flowing through and coming out of uh, Kafka and then going into uh, Hadoop as a platform. But of course, Hadoop uses a system. It uses HDFS or Hadoop file system effectively. So we're actually storing the data. And what we need to do is we actually need to go through the file browser just to show it's there. Of course, I, I talked about using Flume. So we're actually using Flume as a, a, a method to pull the data out of Kafka. Again, it's this subscribe and, and pull method. We can see we can go through. We put it into a default folder called events. It's done by date and time. That's how HDFS typically operates. And, and here we can actually see the events files. We're dropping them in this case. We're dropping them in, in a common event format. Uh, nothing more than that. We can see that they are typically around about 10 megabytes worth in size because it's a test environment. And we can also see this, this temporary one at the very end uh, means that there's events actually flowing into it. So it's not, not fully complete and written. But the important thing is that we can see that there's some event files. We can see there's data in there. Uh, and it's it's doing that over time. Uh, in this particular case, it's doing it over a particular time period. So the data is in there. And of course, being a very simple uh, browser that we're using for the web interface for Cloudera, we can actually log in and look at the data as well. So uh, here we can actually see that there is common event format data in there. We can see that the data is what we call key value pairs. So it is a uh, reference and then an equal symbol, and then the actual data itself. That makes it much simpler to do processing on that data with regards to doing analytics and searching and, and other Hadoop operations that we would normally expect to use. So there is a reason for doing this. Common event format is, is simple. It's a known structure, and it's straightforward. More importantly, you do need to have that structured data to do this kind of analytics at scale. So we can see that there's the data there, and there's the information, and it's been streamed into uh, HDFS for storage in common event format. It's very simple and very straightforward, but it does illustrate that it, uh, it, it has that capability and power uh, to actually feed that log data and stream it straight, in this case, through Flume into Cloudera. So it just gives you a quick example of some of the uh, very high level uh, and features and functions that are available as part of ADP or ArcSight Data Platform version 2.0. Thank you very much for your time. I will be digging into some more of these details uh, in later videos, but I wanted to get this one out there so you can actually see some of the reasons and up, uh, for actually upgrading to this later version because it does give you a much more management and control of what's going on. So thank you very much for your time.